everyone! Welcome to the next episode of Solve with Burke's Kids. I am your host, Kayla, and today we are going to be exploring the career of a military doctor, Dr. Dan Hodge. Welcome, Dr. Hodge. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, and i um, really excited to be able to talk to you guys. I, Yeah, so I'm, I'm Dan Hodge. I uh, just recently got out of the Navy. So I wanted to give um, sort of just an overview of like what medical training looks like because it, you know, it is a really long road. Uh, and uh, just to kind of give you some perspective, so four years of high school, uh, four years of undergraduate studies, then you do four years of medical school, either MD or DO program. And then following medical school, you go to do a medical residency, which is where you sort of pick your niche and subspecialize uh, in various areas. And depending on what you want to become, uh, in my case, internal medicine. So that's a three-year medical residency. But if you want to be an orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon, those paths tend to be a little bit longer. Um, so just sort of doing the quick math here. So 15 years of, of training, including high school. Over 15 years of training before you can practice on your own as a doctor. Practice might be a misleading term here. You might be thinking of practice as something you do over and over and over until you get better, like practicing for your sport or practicing a musical instrument. If you hear a doctor say that they are practicing medicine, that means that they're doing their job. Every day they practice medicine. Dr. Hodge, medical school is pretty expensive. And you just talked about how many years of schooling you have to go through. So what can someone who's interested in a medical career do to lower the cost of medical school? One of the things that's really cool and, uh, you know, I, I just find amazing. The, the Navy paid for like all of my medical school. They gave me a signing bonus of uh, at the time was it like $20,000 signing bonus. And then they also covered all of my uh, books and sort of like any equipment costs that I had. So they paid for my stethoscope during medical school. Uh, they covered all like the lab uh, equipment costs. It is time for a brainstorm break. Kids, did you know that Dr. Hodge spent some time as a doctor doing telehealth? Telehealth is when you meet with your doctor over the internet on your computer, like Zoom or WebEx. During this brainstorm break, I want you to think about some of the pros and cons of seeing your doctor over the computer. What makes this better than going to the office? And what are some limitations or what makes this not as good as going to see the doctor in the office? Ask your teacher to pause this video so you can discuss. Great! I'm sure you came up with lots of pros and cons about telehealth. Dr. Hodge, are there any other healthcare opportunities in the military? You know, healthcare has a lot of different facets and there's a lot of job opportunities and job growth, particularly in, in the US at this time. And being a physician is just like one component of the healthcare team and the Navy has opportunities in all these different disciplines. I kind of tend to focus more on the officer routes, uh, but we do have a nursing corps that helps with undergraduate studies. We have a medical service corps, which you're, if you're interested in sort of an executive MBA or business focus, that would be uh, something to consider. We have dentists, we have uh, attorneys, and then we also have a uh, non-officer, so enlisted side, and we talk about like corpsman training or your kind of classic medic training. So there's other opportunities and I would encourage, you know, if you're interested in any of these healthcare professions to look at the military and see what options they would have to pay for your school and help you out with the training. What was your specialty in military medicine? I got some extra certification in obesity medicine and was lucky enough to start our, our first ever uh, cardiometabolic and obesity clinic and worked in a, a really fun team of, you know, sort of people from diverse backgrounds, nutrition, exercise, and got to create a weight loss uh, program for active duty service members. Uh, and most people, when 
I tell them that I have a, you know, I worked in an obesity clinic for the military. They, you know, question, they're like, well, isn't everyone in shape? And, you know, like, why would anyone, you know, need an obesity clinic in the military? So I like this graph. This is just sort of, you know, I think when people think of the military, they think of folks when they join the military. So you're fresh out of of high school or undergrad and you're, you're lean and mean. And then throughout your career, whether you're an officer here on the top or enlisted on the bottom, you know, there's this natural progression to gaining weight and developing a bunch of metabolic complications. Um, so that's one issue. And then the same sort of figure, I think, you know, speaks really well to things that the VA health system is dealing with. So people stay lean and mean while they're on active duty, but then once they separate, sort of like myself, like I'm kind of worried and watching my what I'm eating because I don't want to go down this path. You know, this is why obesity medicine is important, and uh, you know, I think folks should kind of know about this. What is important for kids to know if they're interested in enlisting in the military? About like what are the kind of the four most important things about the Navy that young people should know about and i think number one is is the opportunity to serve so physicians and and that part of my life and being a doctor is all about like serving and helping people and um, also having the opportunity to like serve my country and, and wear a uniform with pride and you know work with other people that were invested in that same like kind of service focus i think was has been something that's really been powerful um, and then also like building relationships and connections and having an opportunity to train and not have to worry about either the cost of my medical school or the cost of a stethoscope. Uh, those things, are, you know, are just amazing. Um, and number three would be training with some of the top doctors in the country and going to Walter Reed and meeting people and being sort of mentored by folks that have gone on to become department heads or big figures at like, say UPenn's medical school or UVA's department of, of cardiology. Uh, and so the, those training opportunities and mentorship opportunities were, were amazing. I uh, really appreciate you guys giving me an opportunity to speak. Thank you, Dr. Hodge, for speaking with the students today. Thanks so much. Now it is time for our military medicine activity. Kids. Do you remember how Dr. Hodge was talking about how he spent 15 years training to become a doctor? What is something that you want to do when you grow up? In today's activity, we are going to make a plan to reach that goal. For example, one of your goals might be reading 30 minutes every day to help you become a better reader. Write down your plan and keep it somewhere where you can see it every day. And ask your teacher to email your plan to me at kallenbach at albright.edu so I can see what you're doing to reach your goals. Don't forget, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're never too young to have an idea that can change the world. Believe in yourself because I believe in you. That's all for now. See you next time on Solve It Burke's Kids.